Would you please welcome from Hollywood the world under 10 golf champion, Rory McIlroy. Just loved golf. You know, just really, you know, had a, a, a passion for the game. For just nine years of age, Rory McIlroy from Hollywood is following in the steps of his golfing hero, Tiger Woods. I had lots of putts on the putting green at Hollywood Golf Club as a kid to win the Open. He's swinging a golf club in the front room every day, chipping balls into washing machines. I was fixated with it from a very young age. My whole dad's side of the family were golfers. We grew up very close to the golf course. My dad was a, a good amateur player, a scratch golfer. So it just all stemmed from there. I was never pushed into it in any way. If anything, it was the other way around. I had to drag my dad out to the golf course. Uh, so yeah, just a pure, pure joy and pure passion uh, for me. From Hollywood, North Ireland, Rory McElroy. Hey! Ireland, Rory McElroy. You don't realize it at the time, but, but my parents worked very hard and sacrificed a lot for me to be able to uh, pursue my dream of being a professional golfer. Mum worked night shifts at a factory. Dad, at one point, was working three jobs and every penny they had, you know, it went into me. To be able to give back to them in some way, they deserve everything they have now because of, of what they put in for all those years while I was a kid. Your big hero, of course, is is who? Yeah. Is who? Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Yes. More oh, soaring into the blue sky. Oh, oh, oh it's in! Oh, it's in! That is just extraordinary. It was just a fantastic shot. This man is an absolute superstar. I mean, back when you were 11, you, you look up to these people and, and, and they're your heroes. You know, Tiger was, was a hero of mine. I was obviously a very keen golfer and, and you know, he was the best golfer in the world at that point. I remember Tiger's victory in 2000. It was his first Open. He was really in the prime of his career then. He didn't go in one bunker around the old course, which is, is quite an achievement. You know, that was inspirational. I was 11 years old when that happened. He was an inspiration, he was a hero. You see him doing these great things, winning majors, making it look easy to win majors. Um, and I think you know, people are drawn toward dominant performances like that. He inspired me to play golf to try and become better. And I did write the letter. You know, I, I told him that one day I'll be hopefully competing against him. And um, I'm not sh quite sure I said that I'd beat him, but I, I definitely was saying that I wanted to be up there with them. The Americans at Tiger Woods, we have young Roy, and believe you me, this boy can hit a ball. You know, sometimes those things turn into reality. Luckily for me, it did. Now this is Rory McIlroy. This for Birdie. He's got it. He's got it. McElroy now on the 13th tee. I didn't, I didn't feel any pressure at all at Carnisty. I was just there really enjoying myself. Oh, beautiful shot. 
I was confident, I was playing well. You know, I just, I loved being there. Oh, have a look at this. Look at this. And for a share of the lead. That sort of score today must have been beyond your wildest dreams, really. One better than Tiger Woods. One better than bad, Tiger, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to go out and, and just enjoy the whole thing. At that point in my life, I didn't know how many more Opens I'd play. I didn't know if that was going to be my first or last major championship. 18 years old, fearless. Your ultimate ambition? To win this, you know. You only might win it this week. Yeah, I know. Get left. Come on, get down there. What a marvellous performance this week. This kid will be around for a long time. I didn't feel any pressure at all. Uh, I, I wasn't really expecting anything of myself, so I just was going out there to, to try and play the best that I could. McElroy now for a round of 72. Well done, what a way to finish. Finish in style. Winning the silver medal at the Carnoustie to start my open career was a, a nice, way to, nice way to start. It was the wins in America that established me as, as one of the best players in the world and there's a reason for that and that's because my game is probably best suited to conditions over there. I mean, my, my game is primarily suited to calmer conditions, softer conditions, just because of my ball flight and, and the sort of power game that I play. Going a touch left. Yeah, I've been disappointed with how I've performed at the Open. It was something that I really wanted to do, was to, to try and get better playing in British-style conditions. This wind howling across from left to right. It's a mental grind, playing in the wind, playing in the rain, not just battling the golf course, but battling the elements. It's a very mental grind, and I think physically as well. It's a completely different test of golf than, than what we face throughout the rest of the year. That's where experience comes in, Ken. Uh, Rory McIlroy, and bother again. That's another shot gone. I think every aspect of your game at an Open Championship gets tested and ultimately the person who handles the adversity the best is usually the guy that comes out on top. There's been times where I have enjoyed it and times where I've, I've done well in it and then there's been times when I haven't, you know, I, I haven't liked it. I haven't liked the challenge. I'm not a fan of golf tournaments that are predicted so much by the weather. You know, it's sort of, it's not my sort of golf. You know, these conditions, I just don't enjoy playing in them really. You know, that's, uh, that's the bottom line. There's no point in changing your game for one week a year. But it is, I, I, you know, ultimately, if, if I want to call myself a great player or, you know, a complete golfer, I'm going to have to win in conditions like that. Never looked like it, did it? Oh, spun off the bank, didn't get it up high enough. It's a bit of turmoil going on. After the Friday at Muirfield in 2013 was probably the lowest point in my professional career. It was the first cut I'd missed at the Open. I was completely lost with my game. Let's sit down. Oh. You know, I started the year at number one in the world. I think at that point at Muirfield I was number two, but I didn't feel like I was playing like the number two golfer in the world, and that, that was, I was struggling with that a little bit. Yeah, it's going to get worse. I was lost out there, I, I didn't know what to do, I had no answers. It wasn't a good point in my career. Oh no. no I'm definitely underthinking on the golf course, maybe overthinking it off it. I, I just, I just wasn't, 
just wasn't at the races. I, I can't really fathom it at the minute and it's hard to stand up here and tell you guys what's, what's really wrong. And every time you come back and play close to home, I think there's always a bit of pressure to perform because you've got friends and family watching and you, you want to play well, not just for yourself, but for them. Oh my goodness, not in a bunker. You can't put it into a bunker. I was at a point where my, my game and my swing just wouldn't allow me to do that. Yeah, I just can't put it all together mentally out there. Sometimes I feel like I'm walking around out there and I'm unconscious, like brain dead. <laughs> you know, golf was always fun for me. It was always a joy to play. It was always, you know, my favorite thing to get out onto a golf course and play. And at that point, it, it just, it wasn't like that. It, it felt like a job, it felt like a grind. I just wasn't enjoying it as much as I probably should have been. I mean, golf is always going to be more enjoyable when you play better and you play well and things come easy. Of course it is, but you know, I, I had to learn the, to enjoy the challenge of trying to get better. And that's the real thing I meant when rediscovering my passion to try and get better each and every day. And, and, and leading up to the Open at Hoylake in 14, that's, that's really what I did. You know, all I really did was play golf, hit golf balls, go to the gym, um, do everything that I could to, to become a better player. And I didn't really know when the results would start to come. And everything just sort of came together at the Open at Hoylake. You know, that, that was when everything just, just sort of clicked. I think a very important shot for me was the second shot into the, the second hole on Thursday morning. It was just a very, you know, it was a, a quality shot and hitting a shot like that so early on in the tournament just, it gives you confidence. Oh, that's an absolute cracker jack, he's got to admit. Oh, man. <laughs> it was a great way to start the championship. That press conference, it was, it was tough. There were so many questions asked about it. Rory, when was it exactly that you realised Freaky Fridays had become a problem? I had a bad Friday afternoon at Augusta, and then I started off horrifically at Quail Hollow on Friday afternoon, and then did the same thing at Sawgrass the week later. So that was like three tournaments in a row. That's when I was, a, was conscious of it. In answering questions about Fridays, it's coming out of the forefront of your mind. I was just so determined to not let this be the week where that happens again. It, it seemed like it was the same story. Oh, Rory can't back it up. He can't shoot a good second round to, to set him up for the weekend. I'm sure a lot of other people were thinking, oh, here we go again. But I didn't panic after that. It was good to birdie the fifth, and then I hit a great eight iron into the, the sixth hole. Even the, the tee shot on six that was a real, real pleasing thing, it was the putt. Yeah, here we go. I'll tell you what, he gets that putter rolling and wash out everyone else. Those birdies on five and six really settled me into the round and, and got me going. Oh, what a round. Lovely stuff. I, I felt like I put everything to bed um, on that Friday. I think there's any you know, crowds in golf like the crowds that you get at the Open because there's so many people. It was 
Liverpool is a, is a boisterous crowd, but it was great. I got a great support the whole way through the tournament. It was incredible. Um, you know, they come out in, in all sorts of weather conditions to, to watch the golf. And it is, it's a real pleasure to, to play in front of so many people like that. He's looking good, I think. He likes it. I had a, I had a perfect shot. At him. He loves it. Oh, just huge hitting. I probably couldn't have left myself a, a better putt on the green for Eagle. Oh. 18 was a hole that I was comfortable on all week. I took a five iron, hoping to pitch it about 215 but I hit it so well that it came down quite soft. It was just, uh, it was a perfect shot. You're looking back on the championship, they were the two best shots I had all week. When I was two years of age, Dad took me out um, to the course and um, made me hit a couple of shots and that's how I got into golf. My dad's always been the biggest believer in me, the biggest believer in my ability and um, you know saw the potential from a very early age. He obviously had believed in me, his friends believed in me and they they put a little bet on and they obviously got very good odds back then uh, for me to win the Open within the next 10 years. I think it was 500 to one. It didn't feel like I, you know, that was a sure thing to win. There's a a lot of things that can happen at an Open Championship on a Lynx golf course, you know, especially at Hoylake. On five, I hit this shot. I hit this thing way right near the grandstand. Ooh, plummets into the grandstand area. I'm making bogey there. It wasn't ideal, but I told myself walking off the fifth green, you're even par after five. That's exactly where you were on Friday. It's exactly where you were yesterday. Nothing's different. Walking onto the sixth, I had a good chip shot up there. It just rolled past the pin. It was probably the first putt of the week that I got a little anxious on, a little tentative. And then I thought, right, like, let's just steady the ship here. Sergio was making birdies. Ricky was making birdies. It seemed like everyone in the field were making birdies apart from me. <laughs> and, you know, that six shot lead went down to, you know, a three shot lead. So the birdie on nine was huge. It's okay. Looks very okay. If you can limit the damage as much as possible, especially at the Open Championship, then you're always going to do well. At that point, it was just about hitting fairways, hitting greens. And to follow it up with a putt like that was really, really nice. stay very focused and very concentrated for that, that last nine holes. I had a great tee shot on 10 and a great five iron. Those birdies in nine and 10 were crucial. It's all in the mind. At that point, you're far enough ahead that if you can keep your mind in the right place, it's going to be very hard for anyone to catch you. The week of the Open Championship, the Claret Jug is on your mind every day. You know, it's on your mind when you go to bed at night, and it's, you know, it's, it's there. It's, it's a constant, you know, there's a constant image of it in your head. 
because that was the most important tournament to me growing up as a kid. You know, I, I talked about it with friends, about what it would mean to win the Open. When you think about it or, or describe what it might feel like if you do, and then you actually do it, it's indescribable, really. It's the greatest walk in golf, no doubt, no doubt. Even just thinking about it now, you, you know, I get goosebumps and hairs in the back of my neck stand up. The massive grandstands, you know, the standing ovation, it is the closest thing that we're going to get to playing in front of 75,000 people at Old Trafford or Wembley. It's the best and the biggest tournament in the world and it is, it's the greatest walk. I wish I could have enjoyed it a little more. I soaked it all in and I got goosebumps, but I still never allowed myself to think that I'd won, probably until I hit the bunker shot on 18. and then you stand over your putt. I mean, the silence is almost deafening. As I was walking off the green, I saw my mum walking towards me with tears going everywhere, and, and it, was, it was a really nice moment that's you know, gonna live in my memory for the rest of my life. Hopefully it's some sort of payback for everything that they were able to do for me. It's nice to get home. Nice to get home and enjoy this on the spy with everyone else. Enjoy it with, with a few friends and family and I cut it close, I cut it fine. Uh, I made him wait all those 10 years to, uh, to reap the rewards. Obviously meant a lot to him, but, but more to his friends in terms of the money that, that they won from that. Cheers. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Dad. Thank awesome. You. awesome. It was a, a good return on, on not such a big bet. <laughs> I think they won 50 grand each. I think they won 200 grand. There's a many more. So proud of you. It is a McElroy major. Rory has won his Open. Champion of 2014. I think I'm, I'm proudest of the way I handled my emotions. That's what I'm proudest of. I'm proudest of how I gathered myself when I needed to. Proud of how I kept it together, even when it got a little tight. A couple of months after I'd won the Open, I was staying in Manhattan and I, I went for a run around Central Park and I was halfway through my run and suddenly it just hit me, I'm, I'm the Open Champion. It's a sort of a surreal feeling. The Claret Jug is the most coveted trophy in all of golf. You know, to see my name on there alongside some of those others, Savvy, Faldo, Tiger, Nicholas, Player, <sighs> sort of surreal in a way. When I look back on this win, that's what I'll, that's what I'll think most about.